snack has played a, a huge part in my training camp. The protein, the, the ZMA, everything. The, the pre-workout has played such a major part in my training camp, keeping me healthy, keeping me recovered, keeping me feeling good, strong, and ready for my next workout. One corner you have the WBC champion, arguably the hardest hitter in the history of boxing. Across the ring, the undefeated lineal champion, immensely skilled Goliath who seemingly cannot be stopped. Certainly their trainers and strategists have their work cut out for them. We're going to hear from the camps at this time. First, Tyson Fury's trainer, the new head trainer for Team Gypsy King. Not new to Tyson Fury at all, long time confident. Let's hear from Cronk Jim in Detroit, Sugar Hill Stewart. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'd like to say that um, this fight here this is one of those fights that you don't want to miss. Uh, the first one was a fight you didn't want to miss, but I'm sure everybody watched it on the replay. Um, you had two, uh, two great champions going at it with each other. Uh, both of the fighters, they left the ring still undefeated, still wanting to settle the score. And February 22nd, the score will be settled. Um, these are the two heavyweights in the division in a division of big heavyweights. Um, the division has changed a bit. The heavyweights uh, from yesteryear, they were smaller, but now every heavyweight you have now out here is 200 and, um, 230, 250 pounds, 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", 6'9". It's an incredible time for boxing to have all these guys here fighting strong fights, fighting each other, and uh, making this division once again what it used to be. The heavyweight division is still the biggest, most powerful division in boxing. It always will be. Everyone wants to see the big guys throw those big blows. Um, you got Deontay Wilder, big puncher, the biggest puncher in boxing history. And you got Tyson Fury, one of the best boxers out there in boxing history as well. Um, February 22nd, you're gonna see an exciting fight I don't know what else to really say about it. I'm happy to uh, be training here with uh, Tyson Fury. It's been about 10 years since uh, we trained together. Um, he trained with me and my uncle Emmanuel, and um, I'm here completing what Emmanuel started. Thank you. Thank you, Sugar Hill. Now we're going to hear from uh, the other side, the co-manager of Deontay Wilder. Please welcome International Boxing Hall of Famer, Shelly Finkel. Go on, Shelly. How are you doing? I think it's pretty obvious that I like this man over here. When he tried to tell us we picked a light fighter, he knew. I knew he wasn't. But also, I do care about him. So hopefully after he gets knocked out, he has this other job with wrestling. And they're looking forward to him, and he was great. So I'm really glad for it. I thought you could have done better than that, Shelley. Come on. Yeah, Is that it? You overshadow me. I Come can't on. Do that. I'll go easy. You can't. It's not in you. All right, we're going to hear from both of our fighters at this time. Certainly no strangers to the limelight and the microphone, uh, both of them. First, let's hear from the undefeated lineal heavyweight world champion, Tyson Fury. Tyson? Hello. Can everybody hear me? Fantastic. First of all, thank you, everybody, to come and see the Gypsy King again on this lovely day. Second of all, we have the rematch. Um, I can't remember a bigger heavyweight fight in a long time. Maybe Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson was the last big, big fight like this. That was the last US-UK showdown. Um, Deontay Wilder took a bit of my advice on his dress sense, I can see. He's looking well, smart. Um, and that's it, really. You know, There's not much I can say. That, and I don't... For the first time in my boxing career, I don't need to sell this fight. 
People know what they're going to get. It says exactly what it says on the tin. You're going to get a good fight. Whether I, I think the consensus is either he knocks me out or I win on points. Is that what, that's what's been going around? I have a fury, yeah, get wins on points or Wilder wins by KO. Um, you know, and usually when people have that opinion, it usually goes the opposite way around. So, yeah, expect Wilder to come out boxing and moving, looking for a points victory. And expect me to come out bombing, looking for a knockout. Um, it's usually what happens, usually what happens. But apart from that, Deontay Wilder hasn't been returning my calls or messages or texts since I beat him last time. Um, yeah, he tried to keep his distance. He didn't want to do press conferences with me. He didn't want to be around me in case I got into his head. You know, all this getting into people's heads, I think it's a lot of shit anyway, to be fair. It's like, he, I'm living in his head rent free and all that. You've heard it all before, but you know, at the end of the day, it's just talk. Sticks and stones break your bones. Names will never hurt you. It doesn't really matter what I say or what Wilder says. It all matters what happens on the night, February 22nd. And what's going to happen on that night is I'm going to get what I won last time. I'm going to get that green belt. I'm also going to get the ring magazine. And I'm also going to keep my lineal championship. And if he wants to rematch again, no problem. Beat a man once, you beat him again, you definitely beat him three times in a row. Not a bother. And that is about all from me. Thank you very much. And now it's time to hear from the undefeated WBC world champion, Deontay Wilder. How you guys doing? It's great to be back. You know, another event. Um... Thanks to all, the, all everyone that's involved in this this um, amazing, you know, heavyweight title fight, one of the biggest sh of this era for sure. You know, um, I, I can't wait. Y'all already know, man. I'm in. I'm always in my element. I'm always in the zone. You know, and right now, I, man, I can't wait. I'm going into camp. Can't wait to get back into camp. You know, uh, my body feel like it's walking into the sixth week of camp instead of, instead of the third week of camp. And it's, it's been amazing for me because it's been a, a quick turnaround for me. Um, usually I'm months and months and months at a time before I have another fight, but I'm still coming in shape. You know, I'm, you know, I always say I put shape on top of shape, but this time around I'm putting shape on top of shape on top of shape. You know, and um, it allowed me to prepare, you know, even, even, even harder, even more for him. And we all know rematches, I'm, I'm, I'm always sharp. Because I've been in there with them before. I understand what they're capable of doing and what they're planning on doing and what, and, what, and, and, and what they did in the fight. And I take away from that. And I bring it to account for me. So um, I'm, I'm prepared more than ever for this fight. I knocked him out the first time. I told Fury two years ago that I was going to baptize him. And I did just that. You know, rising, rising, rising up is part of the baptism. I told him he was going to go, Timber. And he did just that. But this time around, it's a different story. This time around, this is called unfinished business. This point in time, he won't be able to get up. And since he's in WWE, I'm going to make sure he go right out the ring. And I might get on the top of the bucket or the rope and come down with a flying elbow kick. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But I can't wait for this fight. This is going to be an exciting fight like it was the first time. I think the controversial decision that the referee gave him, you know, I, I think it helped, it, I helped, helped this out for the second time around. You know, them not wanting a quick rematch, I think it helped this out the second time. Made it, definitely made it bigger. You know, we had two warm-ups. Um, mines was a lot more danger, dangerous than he is. You know, he played it safe in the playground while I went, to, while I went on to the mountaintop and climbed it. Two different fighters, two different times, two different paths. You know, one just want to survive me, I'm building for legacy. One go around and talk about he have a lineal title, something that's, that's make-believe and fake. He come around and even have events that go 12 rounds with no belt on him, but the one that holds his pants up now. That's the only thing. But February 22nd, that lineal bullshit, it ends there. It ends with him. He need validation from the people. He needs some type of inspiration, some type of motivation to feel like he beat me such a far wide margin that he did. When he know he didn't, 
And if so, why so many trainers? Why so many rotations? He rotating trainers like he do his draws. Every day changing. Firing, hiring. The first time around, he want to talk about how he was out of shape and stuff. But you did. You came in great shape the first time. Like you supposed to. What you spent? 100,000 pounds? Trainers, camps, different little things. Well, I still had my old trainers. Still sat back. And still to this day, I got the same people. You don't see me firing no one. You don't see me bringing no one on if you're supposed to be such this great fighter. <laughs> you know? And I, I was supposed to be this guy that don't have no skills. But we see who's more concerned than the other ones. So, Cause when you have power, there's no way around it. You can't prepare for that. You can't prepare for that. The only thing you can do is, 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 is hope that when it landed, it don't do that much damage. I gave this man a concussion the first time. He don't even know how he got on the ground, nor do he know how he got up. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a concussion. And that been dealing with him for the, for, the, for the remaining of the fight since the last fight. He been thinking about that over and over and over. And the only way he can promote himself with that fight is him getting up off his back. <laughs> hey, we doing endorsements as well too. Put one at the bottom of his feet because he's definitely going down. And that's all he's been looking for. That's all he's been looking at. That's the only thing he can fathom his mind around is how he knocked me down and I got up. He needs some type of confidence. But you beat him, Fury. You beat him. Don't worry. You beat him. You beat him with a wide margin. Okay, we're going to see. But all that's put, all that right there, all that talk before, it dies. It's dead. This is a new, this is a new beginning right here. This is unfinished business that I will finish. I will do exactly what I said I would do. I'm gonna knock him out. Like I told him, I'm the lion, I'm the king of the jungle. And come February 27th, I'm gonna rip his head off his body. Remember I said that, I'm gonna knock you out there ropes. So you can really feel a WWE moment in real life. I'm glad you got a second job, you need it. This is your whole plans. What I'm going to do when this guy knock my marbles out of my head? Because I'm going to definitely do it. And I can't wait. This is a major fight for you guys. You should be excited. This is the Wilder Fury 2 rematch. And it don't get no better than this. Two, 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 two giants. Two champions putting, putting their life on the line. For others' entertainment. From, so, so, from a distance of places. He's from all the way over the pond. And I'm from here. Two guys putting their energy in the ring just to see who is the king. I speak it, I believe, and I receive it. And I will knock them out come February the 22nd. And we move on with our lives from there. But until then, man, y'all sit tight. <laughs> Buckle up. It's going to be a long ride until that time. We still got a couple of more weeks in camp to prepare for this fight, to give y'all the best fight y'all have ever seen in your lives. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So stay tuned. If you can't buy no ticket, just go to the arena. Make sure you click that button. Till then, I can't wait, baby. Bomb Squad! Thank you, Deontay Wilder. Now we're going to have a Q&A session. We have, uh, if you have some questions, you can ask the fighters. We have the promoters. We have the trainers as well. And uh, looks like we have Lance here. Hey, Lance. Hey, guys. Deontay, for you, this, this fight is an opportunity for you to really prove that you are a boxer. I mean, he tested your boxing skills in the first fight. He's clearly going to do it again following the Luis Ortiz fight. Can you talk about that and how, you know, you as a boxer have an opportunity to shine here? Almost definitely. I mean, me as a boxer have an opportunity each and every time I have an outing. You know, um, when I get in the ring, so, so many different things go through my head uh, when I'm trying to adjust to my opponent when I'm trying to time him, when I'm building up all the data that I need for him to, to set him up for that perfect punch. People don't understand, like with skills, it, 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 it's, it's a lot of things that come with skills, not just the average one-on-one -on -one fundamental of throwing the jab, throwing the right hand, and falling behind the left hook, you know. It's so many different things, and that's why boxing 
is what it is. Styles make fights, and there'll always be the same styles make fights. For we all have to have different types of styles and abilities of doing things. So in this, in, in you know, the first one, I, I showed. I was so excited. I was. I was. This was my time. You know, it was my time. You, I don't think a person will ever know what it feels like to compete against so many different sports in this country, knowing that boxing is not the, not the top sport, and finally get you a date to yourself. You know, it was amazing. Have the first promotion. I came in with one arm. You know, I broke my hand in camp. I only had 12 weeks and four days to train. And that 12 weeks and four days, guess what? When that ran out, I was going to be in the ring exact. And I didn't want to risk throwing my hand in camp. I said, at least if I break it in, in, in the fight, I'm getting paid. But this time around, I'm in full health. I got both of my hands together. And with Deontay Wilder, I'm unpredictable, so you just don't know what's going to happen. But I know when it comes, bam, baby, good night. Thank you so much. And Tyson, for you, I, I know that you want probably a repeat of the last fight where you d were sensational in the boxing element of it. Is that right? And then on, uh, on top of that, the change in trainers, how will that help you execute that? What can I say that Deontay Wilder hasn't always bored us to death with for the last 20 minutes? Um, I'm going to sleep listening to him talk on on about nothing. I'm just waiting to hear his point. He still hasn't got to the point after seven minutes of talking. Um, what am I going to do in the fight? I'm going to win. That's what I do. Deontay Wilder can make all the excuses he wants to make up in his own brain. His team, everybody can tell him, you won that fight, baby, you won that fight. But listen, as a fighting man, you know when you win and lose fights. Simple as. He lost the fight fair and square. He will lose the fight again fair and square. He had to, they had to rob a man who was out the ring for three years, ballooned up 147 pounds, and he still couldn't beat him. They had to give him a bad decision in L.A., you know, to get, to get a victory for the so-called top bloke, top champion. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to give him a boxing lesson, and I'm going to knock him out. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Why did I bring Sugar Hill in? Because I wanted to. Why do I keep switching trainers? Because I want to. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer in... You're never a finished article. You can always improve your game. You can always polish it up again. You know, Wilder says he sticks with his team. Fair play to him. Um, I'm a man who likes to keep, keep freshening things up now and again, and I do that regular. Um, it's what I do. So, you know, I'm training hard in the gym. I don't make excuses. It was what it was. I won fair and square, and it was what it was. We get to do it again. We get paid for the same thing twice. So I'm not complaining. You know, he's the man here making excuses. He broke his right hand. I only had 12 weeks and four days to train. 12 weeks. I can be ready for a fight in two weeks. I'm ready for a fight today. Never mind 12 weeks and four days. Fuck me. You know, there's no need for excuses. There's no need for problems. I've heard he's had the flu. I heard he broke his hand. I heard he was having problems. Oh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Because when I get him in there again, I'm going to make him feel the fury. He will get it. I've never been as sure as anything in my whole life. As sure as I was this morning putting this suit on and putting my shoes on and having a wash and brushing my teeth. That's how sure I'm going to kick this motherfucker's ass all over that ring. 100%. He can't win. He's got a puncher chance just like everybody else. He could barely land it last time. He landed two, three punches in the full fight. I'm much sharper now. Match fit, coming off 12 good rounds. You know, been in training camp. I haven't had to lose any weight. I'm fine. I'm great. Ready to rumble right now. Hope he trains hard. Hope he goes to bed sleeping, thinking about me. If only I could land me right hand. You know, he's got out of jail a couple of times with that right hand in his last couple of fights. Like he said, people say to me, oh, he's lucky he, get, he gets away with this one shot. Like he just said, it ain't luck. He has to, he has to put it there. But this time, it won't be there. Because I'm going to be super slippery. I'm going to be like a, a goldfish in a goldfish bowl, swimming away. <laughs> and that's it, you know. I'm not here to, uh, to call him or run him down. Because when I run him down, it only makes my victory look shitter on the night, doesn't it? So I want, him, I want people to think he's the best puncher in history, the greatest boxer in history, longest reigning champion ever, the best there ever was. So when I beat him February 22nd, then it makes my victory look even sweeter. But when I really face facts, when I beat Deontay Wilder, I've just beat another bare bum in the shower with a pair of boxing gloves on. Just another, another tick on the record, another man in the street. That's all he is. He's another person to me, makes numbers. The Tyson Fury Roadshow continues. And who knows where it will end next? It might be Tokyo, it might be Rome, it might be anywhere. 
Next stop, Las Vegas. Keep watching. Deontay over here. Uh, this will be your third rematch. You had one with Berman Severn, Luis Ortiz, and now Fury. Fury has not had a rematch, so what do, you what do you make of the fact that you can see and prepare for an opponent the second time and he hasn't had that opportunity yet? I it's have had that opportunity. I have had a rematch before, twice. Get your boxing facts straight, Mosh. Come on. He's aggravated, don't mind him. <laughs> um, you know, in rematches, I'm always better than I was the first time because of what I've seen in the ring and what I've experienced with my opponent. So the second time around, the preparation is a little bit easier because we understand what are they trying to do. I'm very smart. My IQ in the ring is very, very high, you know, and that's why I'm able to set guys up like I'm able to set them up and then get rid of them in the, in the devastating fashion that I, I get rid of them in. With him, I know everything he's, he want to do. He gave me 100% of him. No matter what he may say, no matter if he got off the couch or whatever, he did the right things to get himself back into shape with all the, the things that was going on. Of course, every fighter that faced me get in tip top A plus, plus, plus shape because they understand the danger that they're putting their self in. They're putting their body in. You know, this is, this, is, this is real life right here. When you boxing, it's real life. We're actually putting our lives on the line. And he understands that. So, with that being said, everything that he, he wants to do, I'm going to diffuse it. Everything he's trying to do, that herky-jerky stuff and trying to win rounds at the end of the round, sticking his long tongue out and shaking his bald head, that shit ain't going to work. Yeah. That ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm looking forward to the rematch. We know that when I talk and say things, things actually happen. We know when he talks, you know, it's just only just to talk to entertain to try to get a couple of jokes and laughs in and stuff like that. But February 22nd, when that bell ring, it ain't no joke about that. Thank you. <laughs> Tyson's movement in the gym. And what did you learn from the first fight about what you have to do to counteract that? Well, we got a lot of great guys that, that come in and out of there. and. Um, they use the herky-jerky stuff, the feints and all that and, and, and different things like that. You know, we're bringing different guys at different heights in, you know, that, uh, you know, that can give me different looks for sure. Uh, what was that second question you were saying? I was just saying, what did, you, what did you learn from the first fight? What do you need to do to stop him from getting uh, away from for the fir First fight, just being more calmer. You know, you're going to see a, more, a much more calmer and patient Wilder this time, just like you've seen in the Ortiz. You know, a lot of people didn't understand what I was doing, you know. And when you're blessed with power, you know, um, you don't, you're not worrying about rounds and different things like that. The object of boxing is to win. Not just to win rounds, but to win. And I win. And I do it in a devastating fashion. I do it, for, I do it in, a, in, a, in a fashion in which you guys get dressed to come and see. Y'all not coming to see a heavyweight go 12 rounds talking about Skills and wheels and paying bills, you come to see him get knocked out. That's what you come to see because you most likely have things planned, you know, after that, that you want to go see. So when it's a good night, hey, you get the, hey, you say, thank you, Deontay, and you go on about your business and handle what you got to do that night. But I'm more, I'm, I'm more than prepared. Like he said, he's ready right now. I am too. And I can say it with a smile. I'm in a happy place in my life. I'm very happy. I'm blessed. My family is blessed. And I'm looking forward to this rematch. You know, this is the, this is the set of the talk. You know, winner takes all right here. And, and I can't wait. Trust me. He's getting knocked out. Thank you. I just one for Tyson. Tyson, I've seen you're working with George Lockhart, the nutritionist. Uh, why did you decide to bring George into your camp? And what difference is he making to the work that you're doing at the moment? Yeah, I brought George in. He's, he's helping with my nutrition. Um, seems a really good guy, and I'm eating more than I've ever had before, and training good, and everything's going really well. No injuries, and training camp's going quite well. I've only just started training camp like 10 days ago. Um, so, yeah, I can't complain. I, I never have any excuses. The only thing I'd hope to do before I get to the fight is come to it injury-free, and that's usually what any boxer can only ask for, to enter the ring injury-free. And then it's down to us then on the night. You see, one sick more. 
um, and who, who's willing to go home as, as a loser and as a second place person. Um, but listening to Deontay for the last half an hour, one minute he says I made up this title of lineal championships and then he, then he keeps talking about he's going to walk away with them all. So which is it? Have I made it up and is it fake or is it an official title? Um, anyone who knows boxing, knows the lineage of the heavyweight division, goes back to the days of John L. Sullivan, right up to the way to me today, Tyson Fury. Um, all this talk of the lineal ship will uh, be gone after me and whatever. Um, if he beats me, he'll be beating the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, uh, which means he's the best of his era. And, and every era there's the best, and I'm the current best <coughs> lineal champion of my era. I took that title from Vladimir Klitschko, 28th of November 2015. Nobody disputed that Vladimir was the, the best of, he, of, of the day, and I inherited that title off him. So until somebody beats me, I'm still a lineal champion, and still it exists. Um, I actually set a massive precedent when it comes to titles because it was the first time in history that the lineal championship had ever split from the Ring Magazine championship. And I spoke to Ring Magazine guys today and they're, uh, they're quite delighted that the Ring and the lineal will be put back together um, after a three year, four year layoff. So yeah, it's, been, it's, been, it's gonna be a fantastic night. Deontay Wilder uh, is gonna come in and like he said, he's gonna be more patient and more relaxed and whatever he's gonna do. Try to land that right hand. Of course, that's his best weapon, a big right hand. Uh, knock me out, whatever. And it's, it's my job not to let him do that. Um, and the fact of the matter is, I'm not going to dress it up, I'm going to speak the honest truth. If I'm stupid enough to get hit by that big stupid right hand, then I deserve knocking out. And it will knock anybody out. As we saw, he hit me with it twice, and bam, I hit the floor twice. But it's not how you hit the floor, it's how you get back up and respond. And he knows he ain't messing with no quitter, no shit house here. I'm a fighting man. And the great, late, great Brendan Ingle once said, to beat Tyson Fury, you have to nail him to the fucking canvas. And that's what this little skinny leg super noodle will have to do, nail me to the canvas. And if he can't do that, I'm going to eat him up. This time is going to be different. He thinks I'm going to come out irking and jerking, as Eddie Earn says. Everyone's took that style now. The irky-jerky style of Tyson Fury. I made it famous. I'm not looking for irky-jerky. I want him to meet me dead in the centre of the ring. Let's have a slugfest. Best man stands up, loser goes down. I got 20 knockouts out of 29 wins. He knows he was rocked three or four times in that fight, but I never had the gas to finish him. I'll be honest and truthful. I didn't have the gas after the layoff, after all the weight loss. I never had the gas to put my foot down. This time I can turn that screwdriver until he's gone. And I want to meet him head on. El mono, el mono, in the centre of the ring. Let's make it a Tommy Earns, Marvin Agler type fight. Best man stands, the loser goes back and recruits. Back to the gym, back to the drawing board. I'll meet you, Deontay, in the middle of the ring, 22nd of February. I won't be running. You won't have to look anywhere for me. Just watch out for the right hands because you're going to sleep in two rounds. Two. Two rounds, he's going down. I had a dream. I keep having the same dream about round two, round two. I'm playing poker all the time. I keep getting dealt number two, number two. It's definitely a thing. He's getting knocked out in two rounds, 100%. Two. He can laugh about it now. When he's on his back looking up at me, he'll know what I'm talking about, round two. Hey, Tyson, I got a question for you guys both. But, Tyson, for you first, you brought in, you're reuniting with the trainer. What are you looking to get out of reuniting with this trainer for this fight coming out, this rematch? I, I've, just, I've been really honest with you. I told exactly the truth. I'm looking for a knockout. I, I didn't come here again to get a bad decision, you know. I know I'm not going to get a decision in the United States. It's clear. After last time, it's very clear. So that's why I hired Sugar Hill. If I didn't want a knockout, I wouldn't, I wouldn't employ the Kronk trainer who specializes in sitting on your punches and landing the right hand. Look at the Tommy, look at all the Kronk fighters, Klitschko even. They all look for that big right hand. That's all I'm looking for. One big right hand, nail Deontay Wilder. Good night. There's the game plan. I'm looking for a knockout. And if I wasn't looking for a knockout, I'd have kept hold of Ben Davis. I would have sharpened up on what we were doing, irky-jerky, slipping and sliding. I ain't looking for that. I ain't coming here for a points decision. I'm coming for a knockout. Like Deontay Wilder said, I'm sick of points decisions. I've had plenty of them in my career. I've had nine of them. I'm looking for a knockout number 21. And that's brutally honest. Brutally from the heart honest. I'm looking to knock him out. Hey, hey champ, he changed my mind. Of, he changed my mind, of, my line of thinking. Care to respond to his two two uh, round knockout prediction? I mean, that's what he believes in the heart. You know, that's what he believes. I always teach people when I speak. I say, speak it, believe it, receive it. You know, 
And if, if you really, but the, but, the, but the magic of it all is the belief. It's the belief. And though he's saying it, I don't feel that his energy that he believes that he's going to do that. If anything, I feel he's nervous. You know, he's very scared because of what happened the first time. And I understand this is boxing. And sometimes fighters, they have to put up this, this, they have to put up this front, you know, like it's all good and, and nothing, you know, nothing gets to them or nothing hurts them or, you know, we always acting tough and stuff because of the sport that we're in. But I'm a realist, though, you know. And he know what happened. When you, when you get knocked out like that and put on it and you don't know how you got there and how you got up, it was the grace of God that bothers you. That not only affects you, but it affects your environment. It affects your family as well. Because they know you're going in there again with this monster. And you know what he's capable of doing. It's not an act. It's something I do every time I'm out. I knock guys out. Every guy that I've faced, I put them down. And it won't be no difference this time around either. Y'all know what I know. I'm good at it. I'm great at it. I'm providing my service. I'm providing my service to my greatness and giving it to you guys each and every time. We know this. They know what they up against. Like, again, like I said, I'm happy. I sit up here right here with smiles. I'm, I can't even stop smiling because that the inner happiness inside of me. I'm not concerned or worried about who he got in camp or what he got going on. I'm not worried at all. He should be, he should be worried about me. And I already starting camp 10 days, and when I'm already, this is going to the third week. <laughs> Boy, you better. <laughs> Boy, you, <laughs> shit. It's going to be a beautiful moment in time for me, but not so pleasant for him. Thank you very much to our fighters, <clears throat> to our uh, promoters, trainers, camps as well. Thank you to you for being here. That concludes Woo! our Q&A session and it concludes our press conference for today. We've been asked to have our fighters once again square off, face off in the front of the stage for our final photo opportunity. Get your cameras ready. Thanks, guys.